I don't think it's ever the same when I walk into a record store, but I, I always wind up at the counter, that's for sure, because I feel like the great thing about a record store is you've got someone's knowledge there. You can always ask them about what's new in their shop or things that they like. Because I go through cycles of really like listening to a lot of reggae or, you know, a lot of like old disco or whatever. So I'll kind of go there first and, and pick through and just grab whatever catches my eye. Like when we first walked in here uh, today, we're in Isle of Hands right now. And I walked with Chris. I know that Chris has a label associated with the uh, with the store, and I just said, hey, well, what's new on the label? You know, that's really important. The stuff that's gonna be hardest to get when you're back home is the stuff that's very specific to a local scene. I'm sure that there are things in here that we wouldn't find in New York in stores, and probably wouldn't be able to find online unless we were specifically looking for it that they're gonna know about because it's, it's part of the scene here, you know? If I was in uh, Rio, at the end of last year, and I went to this record buyer's apartment um, that he only sort of sells records by appointment, and I just wanted to buy Brazilian music. I mean, he had everything, but I was like, just, just, like, I know very little about Brazilian music, but I said, just tell me what your favorite Brazilian records are, and he just went, you know, picking them all out and stacking them up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I try not to spend too much. He just like, let's, he, he's got no, he's got no limit. This is, is my uh, wife gonna watch this? Can you guarantee uh, that my <laughs> wife is not gonna watch this? <laughs> this one, as you can see, is a, and Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, but A-I-A Barracochea. Yeah, yeah. Ow, got it, that's right. So, I walked into the store and asked Chris what was new on the label, and he pointed this one out to me, and it's really nice, um, apparently, this guy uh, released on Minus many years ago, and um, he's a bass player, so he's playing six string bass on the record, and it's definitely got that Minus kind of vibe to it. So the first record I've picked out is by Roman Flugel. It's um, a new EP called Sliced Africa. First of all, we're playing with Roman yeah. later tonight, which we're very excited about because um, we've always been big fans of his music, and he's played the party. Yeah, and it's just a real gem. He remixed a, a track of mine uh, a few years back as well, um, which he did a great job on. And it's really interesting because I think the stuff that he does for Dial has a very particular sound to it. Sort of slightly more houseier, deeper sound when he makes records for Dial. And this is this is no exception. And the actual Sliced Africa track is is great. It's very percussion heavy, which I'm, I'm always drawn to. This is a record by CeeLo Green, The Soul Machine. So before CeeLo was in Gnarls Barkley and before he was on The Voice, he was CeeLo from Goody Mob, uh, from the Dungeon Family crew. The Dungeon Family was like outcast, the big Atlanta hip hop uh, conglomerate. If I may use such a word. <laughs> but um, this record, I think was his first solo record outside of Goody Mob. There's one song in particular, Living Again, that's just beautiful. I mean, obviously he has a great voice. I have to say, like anything that I've heard from him in the recent past, I've still really liked it a lot. I think he's a, a, a great vocalist and uh, he's got a good ear. Anthony Naples, <laughs> uh, Body Pill on text. You know, we know Anthony very, very well, um, having released his first record uh, on our label. And, um, you know, I've been listening to this a lot since it came out, and I think it's a really, it's a really great album, which is, is not an easy feat when it comes to putting out a, an electronic music long player. Right, you know, yeah. something that's cohesive and sounds like it's um, a single body of work. But I think he's, he's cracked it. You know, there's probably one track on there you're playing the dance floor, if that. Um, but the rest is just really sort of interesting, sort of typical experimentation from, from Anthony. And, um, you know, I think we're just we're kind of proud of him, are we? This is, I'm pretty sure, the first Slum Village record that didn't come out until 
you know, many years after it was finished. Like Fantastic Volume 2 was the album that was commercially released first. And then Fantastic Volume 1 was this kind of like legendary record. But um, I think Q-Tip had gotten a copy of it from Jay Dilla and called Questlove and left him on voicemail with one of the songs from it. And I think Questlove is like abroad and calling back and listening to his voicemail over and over and over again because he's so obsessed with the song. And, you know, copies of this tape were being passed around over through everybody. And this is actually the record that um, when D'Angelo was in the studio recording Voodoo, they were listening to this record like crazy, which makes a lot of sense because Voodoo is so J. Dilla esque, so loose. This is um, a record on The Corner, which is, which is um, Anthony Parasol's label. We put one of his tracks on our last mix CD, and I think when they're played at the right time, and in our types of sets that they, they work really well. Yeah, and Anthony has been DJing in New York and been a part of the scene as just somebody who you'd see going out to parties as well as DJing around town for a long time. You know, like a guy who had a day job but like stuck to his guns and did his thing and has been supportive of us and been supportive of, I think, a lot of the, the people who have been doing things in New York for a long time. So it's just really good to see a guy who's such a good guy get his own get his own moment, you know. Yeah. I pulled this 45 and I, I feel like I will get that one. Whenever I go into a record store, I love to uh, I love to look through the 45s. I feel like it's a good place to find things um, that other people aren't pulling because I don't think many people go to the seven inch box. Um, and, uh, and and I love it when uh, a new or a, you know, a, a current label is putting seven inches out, and no surprise that Eglo um, has done this excellent seven inch of kind of like, uh, kind of like early boogie thing. Like it's it's got like kind of modern production, but the, the instrumentation is very very early boogie. Um, the group is called Sauce Eighty One. So this is a record by Fitz Siegel, um, whose real name is Aaron Siegel, yes. who is a guy that Justin and I actually met um, for the first time like five years ago, yes, five or six years ago, when we took a trip to Detroit just to go and, and hang out and, and, and check it all out. There's a guy that was involved in the scene in, in Detroit. Um, he showed us around. Of, yeah, a yeah. He drove us around and like took us record shopping one yeah. day. It was funny because we met him. We went out there and like a friend of mine um, hooked us up with this guy named Phil Kuhn. And Phil is kind of like the mayor of Detroit. Um, he's done a lot of really interesting things there. And when we were staying with him, he was like, "Oh, well, you should meet this guy, Aaron, who I think sometimes would like do work with him or something like that." Right. Because he knew that Aaron was into records, and I think at this point Aaron had started to do distribution with Fit. And he's a great DJ as well. Yeah. I mean, no surprise, like, I don't think they allow that DJ in Detroit, so. Uh, so this is um, a record from the Floating Points EP called Shadows. But the reason we picked it is because the first track is called Myrtle Avenue, and Sam, um, wrote the track and obviously named the track shortly after playing um, at Mr. Saturday Night on, well, at, at a spot called Market Hotel, which is a place we were doing the party at in, in, in Brooklyn for a while, which was on Myrtle Avenue. Avenue. We brought Sam over, and then not too long after that, he brought us over to play with him at Plastic People. And um, I was staying with him that weekend, and we were in his basement where his studio used to be, and he plays me this tune. This is this is really really good. He goes, well, it's called Myrtle Avenue. Like, yeah. So obviously, I mean, just Sam is a is a, is a genius. I think safe to say, like a, a real a real gift to to music right now. And uh, it's always been kind of an honor that I've held dear that he he named something uh, after. Kind of as an as an homage to the, to our party, which is really really cool.